Hi everyone, thanks for watching. In today's video, we are doing a basic how to on making and installing steel trusses on a cabin I'm building for my old boy. And a truss is this triangular shaped frame that I've just lifted up. Let's rewind it a few steps and start from the start. Now here I am making a truss from the start. I'll lay all the components out in the jig. All the components have been pre-cut, dad's cut them all. The jig is super simple. It's just some studs screwed to the outside of a truss to create the shape and the template. But I'll show you that in a minute. These top pieces I'm laying down are called top cords. And the bottom piece that runs along is called the bottom cord. That's just a technical term for it. If you're making them yourself, call them whatever you want, whatever works for you. So that's the bottom cord there that I'm laying in now. That just goes in. I've pre-cut a little lip off that so they lap over each other nicely. Now that's laying in there, I'll just tack each corner together, making sure they're all pulled tightly to the outside of the jig. Once they're all tacked, you can run around and screw all the corners off completely. I'm doing three screws per join. If the trusses were bigger, I'd probably do more screws, but on a small truss like this, three is ample. Next up, we lay out the webbing and then screw it all together. You can see here, I've got the number one man on the job, Bam Bam. He's gonna do all the screwing for us. The job's always quicker when you've got more hands. And unless it's a four-year-old kid, and then sometimes it'll make it a little bit slower for you. But he loves doing it, so we'll let him get in and have a go. Now this webbing, it's like a brace for the trusses. It stiffens the top cord, stiffens the bottom cord, and just makes it all rigid. So you can walk on it, it's not going to bend and flex under your feet. Once the truss has all been screwed together, you can simply pull it out of the jig, move it out of the way, so the jig is free for the next truss. If you're making your own roof trusses, make one truss and then use that as a template for the rest. So you can see here, this is actually the outline of my roof frame for the trusses. That's the frame. I've just screwed these extra pieces around the perimeter of it. So then we can lay the components in there and they're all the same every time. You can do the same for timber. I've done it on my first shed. We made one truss, made all the rest on top. Then all your trusses are the same. So then your roof line stays nice and straight the whole way through. And so I know where the webbing goes. On the outside of the jig, I've just put marks where the webbing goes. There, there. You can do the same for timber. If you're doing timber trusses, put marks on the outside of your jig so you know you, where your webbing's going. And I'll have another little one down here too, just to hold tie that bottom together better. So there's our stack of trusses. Ten trusses. Took about two and a half hours to make, including making the little jig, which is just screwing bits of steel to the side of one truss or if you're doing timber nailing bits of timber to the side of one truss quick simple cheap easy now we're out on site to install the trusses the first thing that has to be done is to mark the locations of the trusses the trusses obviously sit on top of the top plates there that i'm marking because we're doing a colorborn roof we can have the trusses at 1200 centers or 1200 spacings so i'm just marking the 1200 centers now. You hook your tape on one end, 1200, 2400, 3600, and so on and so forth until you get to the end of your building. And then you do the same on the opposite wall. Now here is the first truss going up. As you can see, that just rolled up nice and easily. They're nice and light. They're a light gauge steel framing, so they're easy to handle. Now I'm screwing down this first corner. What I've lined up here to make sure it's in the right location, I've lined up the bottom cord of the truss with the external part of the outside wall. I know my walls are straight because I've plumbed them all and straightened them all. So as long as you're lining up every truss at that same point of the truss on the same point of the outside of the wall, every truss should be in line because the trusses were made in a jig. They're all exactly the same size. Another trick you can do is to put up one truss at one end, one truss at the other, and then pull a string line through. You can pull it through in the center, you can pull it through on the outside, and that will make sure that your trusses aren't getting lumps and bumps in them or dips in them as you're going along. That's just like a bit of a double precaution if you want to do it that way as well. Now what we're doing here 
we're just putting on a temporary brace on this very first truss because it's on the end gable. There's nothing to brace it to on the outside. So I'm running a 45 brace just from that truss down to the top plate. Dad's just plumbing it up to make sure it's plumb. And then we're right to measure every truss off that truss. Now we're going to put a truss up at the opposite end of the building, like I was saying earlier. So I can have a truss at either end and I can pull the string lines through to make sure all my trusses are running in the same line. And as you can see, the trusses are light. One person can lift a truss by themselves. Here I am just chucking it up on the roof of myself because they're so light. If they were timber, they'd be a bit heavier. They'd be a bit harder to throw around. But if you've got a second person there, you'd have no dramas. Obviously, I've got Daddy helping me out. He can hold them up plumb while I can screw the ends off. Otherwise, they'd want to try and fall over. To do this by yourself would be a real struggle. That's what our little cabin looks like with the roof trusses on. Now I've just got to batten it out. So roof battens, they can be timber or steel. Are these battens and then the roof iron obviously gets fixed to that. You do not fix your roof iron straight to the trusses. You've got to have battens running 90 degrees to the trusses. Um, we've got these braces here and one going out that way up in the roof frame. These ones, they're screwed up to the underside of the truss and then down to the top of the top plate because they're on 45s against each other. They are a brace to brace the gable end. Gable end is this flat end here. It gets a lot of wind loading. So you put those braces in to brace the gable end. Now I'm putting the roof buttons up. You can put roof buttons up by yourself, no dramas, because they're so light. A little trick you can do if you're struggling a little bit, you can put a screw on the bottom side of the roof button and let the roof button slide down till it hits the screw and that will hold it, it will stop it from slipping away out of your hands. And maximum spacing between roof buttons is 1200 for a colorbond roof. Our roof is less than 2400 long. So we're gonna have one button at the bottom, one button at the top, which the ridge cap will also get screwed to, holding the roof iron down at the same time and a center button. When you're doing the top button, you need to work out how wide your ridge cap is from center and where you want that screw line to land. So you've got that top button in the right spot. You don't just bang it up anywhere because otherwise it'll be in the wrong spot, guaranteed. And it's also very important to have your roof buttons nice and straight and running parallel with each other because your roof iron gets screwed down to these buttons. It defines where your screw lines go. So you want a nice straight screw line because you can pick it. If your screw line's all wavy or out of parallel, you can pick it if you stare hard enough at the roof later on. I also forgot to mention, when you're screwing down your battens, they get one screw on each side of the batten at every point where they cross over a truss. This also helps keep the roof nice and stiff. Once all your battens are on, it's like a big frame. It all works against each other and holds it nice and stiff and square. Stops it moving around in the wind because the last thing you want is any movement. You want this building to be rock solid. You don't want any movement. If it moves, you're gonna get cracked plaster or cracked lining, whatever you got on the inside. You just wanna know that it's nice and solid, nice and stiff, it's nice and strong. It'll take any kind of storm. You don't wanna be worried laying in your house, big storm, oh, is my roof gonna fall off? No, you want this thing done right. Now here you can see, I'm screwing down the middle batten and all my trusses are holding up pretty strong. I'm standing on the bottom cords. I'm gonna start walking over the top cords later. Those braces we chucked in earlier when we're building the trusses, this is where they come into play. You can walk all over it and you don't have to worry about anything bending or moving. And you've probably also noticed I've got a lot of overhang on my batten hanging off the end of the building there. I'm gonna have a little eave over the end of this gable just to help keep some weather off the end of the building there. So these battens are hanging out as a fly rafter. I will cut them back shorter. I'll just get the other side on and get a nice straight mark through there before I cut them off to length. Took five days to get to this point. So that's set our profiles, dig the pier, stumps in, build the floor frame, get all the flooring down, build the wall frame, stand them, plumb them, build the roof trusses, put the trusses on, put the battens on. But anyone can build something like this. Yeah, it might take them more than five days. 
but it's doable, it's all doable. You know, if you got no idea what you're doing, it might take you two weeks, but you'll get it done. And you know, if you want to live off the grid and a cheap way of living, you build something like this and you don't have a massive overhead. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you were able to learn something. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.